few seconds. Good stuff. Let's see who we have on the character select screen uh, from uh, Killer Brand Flicks. And right. then, like I said, uh, Portix is former NorCal uh, PR, so definitely got some skill um, onto their name. And Killer Brand Flakes is going to be playing Duck Hunt. What a matchup we got coming up for us. That is, yeah, that's definitely not a character. I, I This might be the first time I feel like I've ever seen this character in this game, you know? Uh, Duck Hunt? Yeah, like, I, in, at least in, in a match that I've got to commentate, because, I mean, I know he's there. I just <laughs> don't see nobody playing him, so this is going to be pretty interesting to uh, see. Killer Brand Flakes. I am uh, I'm sad to announce that NorCal has a lot of duck hunts, uh, and unfortunately, huh. I, I know this I know this character pretty well because of that. Okay. <laughs> All right. And yet another one here with uh, Brand Flakes, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, chat Japan matchup indeed, right there. Yeah, right, you're Leia. right. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, Rhino versus Leia here. So, but <laughs> this is uh yeah, this should be uh, pretty pretty interesting because I feel like uh you know the one thing that Ninja does have uh, in this matchup uh, is the speed. And yeah. the ability to kind of like, oh, you're trying break to set up. Zone. I might be able to just break break zone real quick with my burst dash attack and actually follow up off of it. The damage is on uh, Greninja's side, too. So a forward air, forward smash. Uh, well, any of the smashes should be able to take a stock here. And maybe a, a very deep, I was going to say there back air, but the up air is actually going to work as well. Yeah, Project's doing a really great job just continuing the chase on the Duck Hunt. And uh, Duck Hunt's one of those characters, too, that you have to continue the pressure on. Don't let him set up. And then that eliminates most of the threats that Duck Hunt has. Yeah. Not much to worry about after that. You just have to continue the pressure, not get frame one can, and just continue on. But good to see. Uh, Port Dex already starting off the second stun pretty strong, keeping the aggression consistent, not letting Brand Flakes have much going on. Finally gets something going with the can, has him off stage, but can he execute off of it? Oh, okay, looking for the hard roll in right there. Yeah. Got to put a little more pressure at the ledge. You know, can just sitting there is not going to uh, be too scary. Not going to force the roll on just yet. Uh, with Brand Flakes still having another option be able to get back on so hasn't really put too much damage uh on to Brantflix yet though but now he's been a bit added up got a good 54 that's some good extra credit that's the thing about Grenada, you don't always really need to like get the chip damage because once you find that one opening that's yeah. really enough to start cooking and get a good advantage to stay going for Greninja especially when you don't really have much other options Ooh. oh the text though okay yeah I mean I, I like the can tricks though you know yep. getting that turn around kind of cover a lot of that space near the edge but I'm also loving the, the patience that we're seeing from Portix, who is like, you know, not going to try to willingly just fall in or rush in to get hit by a bunch of canned things. He's like, I can I can wait this out. Yes. I can wait till it's in a, a more favorable position for me to uh, actually go on the offensive here. Yeah, definitely. And I love the use of the water shuriken to kind of just uh, mitigate the can, kind of tricks uh, where Brand Flakes' is, um, can's going to be going, switching the direction back and forth to make it a little bit harder for him to set up and use utilize it to the uh, fullest of its abilities. Okay, get something going with the forward throw. Keeping it going with the Cantrix, definitely interesting to see. Yeah. Stuff I haven't seen before from uh, Duck Hunt. Okay. Yeah. So Portix, I mean, like, he is playing this slow, but he's starting to get... Oh, man, the can actually stopping the yeah. potential down tilt up smash. Uh, but, you know, sometimes as Greninja and on this stage and as a Greninja player, I mean, hey, man, sometimes that up smash just doesn't work. Regardless, yeah, it just so. doesn't, especially on this stage. Yeah. With the, the platform being taller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, I like the I like the attempt 100%, but, you know, if it didn't work, I would have been like, ah, that's just Greninja things, you know. I'm not going to lie to you. Ramplex chipping away, making his way back into this game slowly but surely. He's nice. going to have to, but, yeah, that deep back uh, back air is definitely going to clean it up. Hey, yeah, go, go super deep for it now. Does still have a little bit of a lead, but 93%. I mean, this, the smash could be coming out here for uh, Killer Brand Flakes if he wants to try to uh, even out the stock sooner than later. Yeah, there you go. Chipping away with the can. Setting some stuff up. I like that. That was clean. Up tilt into the back air with the can. Just throwing a little bit of extra pressure any chance he possibly can. And uh, by the way, Tekin, our first not three stock. First not three stock. <laughs> yeah, you got some competitive games here right here as we... Uh, Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. That would have been a crazy uh, stock right there, but it's getting off the stage still. Trying to yeah. force on that roll, but good Vortex. patience. Yeah, well, great patience right there. Love to see it. And I think Greninja is one of those characters that you have to actually be really patient with, too. Right. So good combination of uh, player skill and awareness from Vortex to kind of make sure that Grand Flex doesn't get anything cooking with that roll read. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Uh, can, can, actually kind of just messing up. Oh, that was very close. I like the drag down. Yeah, all right, we're also getting some really good DI off of the dash uh, dash attack, so therefore he's not being able to get like another drag down potential jab lock here. Damage is up on both sides. 
with the rage that uh, that Portix has, if, I mean, if he's able to find like a straight F smash near the edge, that probably could be the stock. But he's still trying to chip away, putting a little extra damage here up these shurikens. Yeah, if, if Brandflex can find this stock now, then I find it possible he can make it win. But that up smash actually working to the best of its ability, and uh, Portex is going to clean that stock up. Good stuff to Portex taking that game number one over Killer Brand Flakes. Really, really good showing for him. Uh, super patient uh, gameplay. Took his time. Good job. Did a good job dealing with the can with the water shuriken. Super patient. Didn't fall for any of the tricks, really. Just got hit with, you know, can. When you're playing against Stunt Hunt, it's going to happen. You're going to get hit by it here and there. That's okay. But he was, um, he was calm. He was patient. Yeah. So good stuff. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, loving the way that uh, we're seeing the, the way that he's been able to kind of develop this game. And even though sometimes he's not really in uh, the driver's seat, he's also not let the game run away from him. He's like, you know, I'm willing to let you control the, the pace of the match right now, uh, and I'll get it back eventually, you know, slowly but surely. And I definitely got him that W here. So uh, right here at the beginning, actually kicks the can for that first uh, bit of damage, just like that quick 50. Going and on the extra four. Yep. Let's see what this Kalos can do here for uh, for Killer Brand Flakes. I do like the pick. Um, it is a good stage for Duck Hunt, and a lot of interesting little can tricks that the character has on this stage. Wow, goes for the spike. Wow, super aggressive gameplay from Killer Brandflex, and wow, putting on so much pressure here at the ledge. He tries to find the jump read. Look, being a little bit more aggressive this time around, and it's paying off in dividends for Killer Brandflex. Let's see what he can have at the ledge here. Yeah, nice, continuing the pressure. Okay. Yeah, still, still, you know, he's definitely like, very focused on the can right now, but I feel like, you know, when it's not working as much, you might have to, you know, get a little more hand-to-hand -hand, uh, CQC. That, I think that's probably the, the part of Duck Hunt that would most likely throw off someone to kind of see a Duck Hunt maybe going in a little more than usual. But yeah. It's potentially able to, it's potentially, uh, able to get this first stock before uh, Portix this time. The gunmen are out, and they are hitting shots, but <laughs> none of them go, nothing going past the blast zone just yet. Dog got paused. He needs to really use them. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, honestly, Portex seems to be scrambling to try to find his footing a lot um, more than he was in the last game. And you can definitely see Killer Brand Flakes utilizing that to the best of his ability. But one thing that Duck Hunt does have trouble with is killing. Uh, sometimes even that can, even like this High Percent, is not going to kill unless it's at the Blast Zone. Yeah, High Percent finally going to take that stock. 94%, not too bad. Killer Brand Flakes taking the first stock here. Okay. A minute. Was, what's the answer? What's the answer? Yeah, a little bit slow on the reaction there. And this is where it can be hard to fight against that gun when yeah. you get a little impatient, right? You, it is frustrating to deal with can. It is frustrating to deal with a character that has that frame one option, you know, like grenade, can. It is frustrating to deal with it. And if you let it get to you, like sometimes this looks like what's happening right now, then you can kind of be a little bit uh, uncomfortable with your approaches and try to rush things. Uh, but we know Portex has the ability to slow things down. We yeah, know Portex can find those openings, right? Yo, Brand Flakes too is just covering a lot of space yep. uh, in front of him himself with the way that he's you know down tilting the can and then bringing it right back. So, oh, oh wow, oh oh, that would have been a crazy drag. Now, wasn't gonna, <laughs> wasn't gonna lose the stock off of it, but still, just you know, potentially could have done something crazy with Ninja. You know, trying to go past him as he's recovering, maybe push him a little too far away from stage because of the water, and then. Oh, oh, where are we going? We're going to make that back. Okay. <laughs> I forgot. That's not, not, it, it, it does end. It doesn't feel like it ends, but it definitely does. Yeah. Okay, it goes for the up tilt can. Covering some good space. Brand Flakes, too, like when he goes for the, that up tilt of the can and it pushes that far up, he has forced out quite a bit of air dodges, but he has just not uh, capitalized on the air dodge coming out. Like that could have potentially been an F smash or an up smash yeah. on the way down, possibly even finish his stock. So, and now, even game. Oh, okay, small hit. Minute. Where are we going? All right, good yeah, coverage right there of the, of the can. You got to make sure he can get back to stage. But now it's on the stage, so. Oh. Huh. Okay. <laughs> I, I, th I, I think I like that idea, too. You know, throw the gunman out, try to create some space down there. But uh, somehow, I think the gunman it felt like he shot the other way. But yeah. yeah maybe be reversed on accident. Yeah, you're, if you're poor Dexter, you're definitely going to take those. Yep, going to shoot him the other way. 160 on to Greninja here. Let's see what he can do with it. Yeah, putting up this wall. So many projectiles. Portix trying to find an opening yet again. Back throw. Oh, just barely off of the execution. Oh. There. Okay. He's going to make it. All right, trying to get a little tricky with the can this time. He's going to be jumping off that ledge a lot. I think that's one of the things that uh, Brandflakes might want to start looking out for. And, nice. Yeah, potentially drop a back air is what I was going to say. But 
Um, because Portix has been jumping off the ledge quite a bit. One, to avoid the can, and two, to avoid that roll up, roll on option that uh, right. Killerbrand uh, Flakes has been looking for. But hasn't been able to find it just yet. Okay. Nice. A little bit of chip damage. Okay. Keeps it going. Yeah. And even, I mean, he actually got all hits of the back air, too, and the can as well. So a little extra damage all on that trade. But it's still very close. 71 yeah. to 74 now. Seeing lots of trades from both of our competitors here. And really, it's just going to be coming down to who can get the kill here at the like high percentage rate. Yeah. Um, Greenwich is obviously going to have a little bit better or easier time setting up those kills. But I don't know. Killer Brandflex has been really cooking. And it really seems like they are really find their, found their own in this match and found a lot of more comfortability with the setups. Yeah, Let's I mean, you can, yeah, you can definitely. He's, he's willing to play the runaway game just a little more. That would have been a great shuriken. Down throw back air with him DI'ing in. It's going to be good. And, and I keep saying, like, with the way that uh, Brandflakes has recovered, if there is no can out, well, we could see some water, uh, you know, tricks. Wh Woo, watch Almost. yourself. Water tricks. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that should, should be. be no. He wanted both. I thought we were just going to get a free forward air there. Yeah. But honestly, the back air even would have probably cleaned it up at that. Yeah. Yeah. That's the fair. And a very close game number two here to end that set. And you can see the eye roll from Killer Brandflakes. Really knew knew that he had something there in that yeah. game number two, and I agree honestly. Um, if that went to a game three, honestly, it could have gone either way. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah, uh, Killer Brandface really started to be found himself comfortable and was finding so many more setups, covering a lot more space. Uh, Portix just barely clutched it out there at the end. Uh, really, really good setup um, from both these two players. All right, shout out to Portix, man. Yeah, man, shout out to Portix. You know, 